Well, hello. Uh, this is Jim Peacock with Peak Careers Consulting, and today we're going to have a chat with a couple of people about uh, what I'm calling bite-sized professional development for career pra practitioners. And uh, um, you'll see what we mean about that, but bottom line is not everybody can afford to go to a, a, a very expensive conference, national conference. Uh, and so what are ways that you can grow professionally as a career practitioner? So briefly, uh, Peak Careers Consulting uh, really began with the Facilitating Career Development course, which I began uh, teaching in 2000 and converted it to a hybrid course. I was one of the, actually the first people to convert this thing to a hybrid. Um, and I've been teaching that at, every year, uh, at least once a year here in Maine. And uh, also, I've also taught it down in Massachusetts and next month in New Hampshire. I have a monthly newsletter for career practitioners. Um, I do individual career counseling, really college age to boomers, and I have a, a number of workshops that I uh, love doing. The most popular ones are using card sorts, uh, understanding transitions, happenstance on LinkedIn, and a few others. I also have a number of uh, online seminars for career practitioners, which are a little different. They're, they're discussion-based with other career practitioners. Um, and they tend to be five weeks long and they come with 15 recertification hours approved by the Center for Credentialing and Education. So uh, today we've got Lakeish Reber, uh, who is a student development advisor and an adjunct instructor at Palm Beach State College. And she's also a past president of the New Jersey Career Development and Employment Counseling Association. And uh, Eric, Pavisek. Oh, you know, I never checked that. Hopefully I did say that right, Eric. Uh, he is a certified career development facilitator and currently uh, works in the career services office at Plymouth State University in New Hampshire. Then you can read their whole bio uh, here and also online in the, uh, uh, on the YouTube channel. But I really would want to, to uh, begin this interview today and hear about some of the ways that you folks are are trying to grow professionally with different ways that are affordable and are kind of doable in everybody's busy lives. And so, uh, Lakeisha, let's start with you. Let's hear what you have to say. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for having me, uh, Jim. And um, yes, you know, with the trying to make sure that um, I get professional development and attending conferences sometimes is, you know, a bit challenging to do and not always affordable. So one of the ways that I continue my professional development on a regular basis is by attending our on-campus professional development events. Um, it's something that we are able to learn about as, as employees, as faculty and staff, um, and even students um, at times can essentially learn about these events and, and, and attend them anytime throughout the week. They have them different days of the week. And so I have attended most recently um, an event that was, I believe, entitled Benefits of Positive Thinking. And it was um, presented by one of our faculty members. And it talked about, um, you know, among other things, of how we can help students um, to sort of see the silver lining and en engage student engagement. So that was one of several events. Um, I attended another event. Um, about game-based learning, again, how we can engage students. So hmm. attending these events is very helpful and very cost-effective. There's no cost, essentially. Um, so it's a great opportunity to continue to develop um, as an advisor as well as, as an instructor so that I can uh, be more effective um, in my practice. So who's who? The, I love this idea. I mean, who's, who oversees that? Who, who sort of directs that particular program? On your campus, right. So that's a that's a great question. We have um, a, a center um, that oversees that. I believe it's called our Professional uh, Teaching and Learning Center hmm. that um, allows for uh, for individuals to to have events um, to sort of present on various topics that are relevant. Um, so that's who over oversees it, and it's, it's a great opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. Great. And the other thing you mentioned, you also mentioned something about LinkedIn learning. What do you, what, talk to me about what that is and how you use that. 
Yeah, absolutely. So LinkedIn Learning, I um, sort of use it as an opportunity to to, to learn about uh, different skills that I want to develop. Some of the recent um, uh, sort of modules that I have clicked onto and, and, and sort of learned uh, is about learning to teach online, um, creating, creating interactive lessons. There's a whole host of different um, topics that you can click on on LinkedIn Learning. And I love that you can go at your own pace. So mm -hmm. I can um, sort of add uh, something and save uh, a module that I want to learn about. And then I can, in my own convenience, go back and just sort of review each section so that I can learn throughout you know, the day, throughout the week. So yeah, I really, I love mm -hmm. the opportunity to have LinkedIn Learning and, and utilize that for my professional development. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, and we may come back to hear some more, but let's uh, let's move to Eric and uh, hear about uh, some of the ways that you uh, grow professionally in a uh, mm -hmm. sort of affordable, bite-sized way. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Jim, for having me. It's great. Uh, so, so in truth, just to kind of build on what Lakish was talking about, uh, one of the things that we also do here at Plymouth State that we have available for the students uh, is lynda.com, which is another sort of self-paced learning platform available uh, mm. through LinkedIn. Um, and what's, you know, and I constantly direct students and myself to that resource just to learn about different kind of components. Um, one feature about me is I just, I, I'm a perpetual learner. I love to just utilize any sort of free time I have to just learn things. Um, and I have to say the applications and apps that are available on smart technology, smartphones, tablets, um, are really hmm. kind of nice ways to kind of take that five, 10 minutes when you're getting your car, you know, serviced or when you're waiting in line in the grocery store. Um, you know, I, I've been learning things like different foreign languages using applications like Duolingo. Um, huh. I've, been, I've been learning uh, software programming languages using, utilizing uh, applications like Solo Learn. Uh, there's a lot of just free resources out there that you can download on your phone. Huh. So if you're, you know, waiting for your flight to go to the professional conference, you can do your own sort of additional professional development then. That's amazing. <laughs> and uh, the other thing you mentioned was MOOCs. What is, mm -hmm. So what have you done? Uh, have, what have you taken? Or, or what's your talk to me a little bit about MOOCs? Not everyone knows what MOOCs are, right? Yep, it's, yep, uh, exactly. It's like um, massive, a, uh, yeah, <laughs> like massive uh, open online, online courses. courses i think yeah so so in some cases there are, uh, a lot of them are from other universities uh, and colleges um, some of them are just your typical recorded videos of lectures some of them are a little bit more uh, you know structured and time bound uh, and there's a lot of you know resources uh, coursera edX um, Khan Academy there's a lot of different ones out there to kind of find out, okay, what, what do you want to learn? Uh, and some of them are incredibly complex. I read the description and I go, mm, probably not for me. I don't understand any of the words in the description. <laughs> and then there are other ones where I go, yeah, you know what? I could probably, you know, listen to a couple of those, watch a couple of those and enjoy them. Yeah. I've, I've actually taken, I think I've had, I think I've done four MOOCs now. And uh, one was, one was on uh, uh, mindfulness, mm -hmm. which was, which was really, that was awesome. Probably actually, and I don't, I don't know if it was my favorite, but the other one, the other really good one was the science of happiness. Mm -hmm. um, and that was really, that was a very interesting course. Uh, and I also did uh, discover what's next. It was sort of on finding purpose. And I think that one, I think that one was taught by Richard Leiter. <laughs> Uh, you, but these were these were through uh, was it ed edX or something? Mm -hmm. And uh, I think two of, two of those were through that through that, that particular group. But they were, I mean, they were legitimate three credit courses. I mean, these were no th there was work to do. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, I didn't do all of the work because I was auditing and I wasn't paying for it. But there were people that were paying for it and actually doing the, you know, the three mm -hmm. credit work. I mean, they're so it was very good. I, I just uh, I found all of those 
very, very nice. And you, you had to sort of keep up, but I mean, I, I mean, I had just devoted probably 15 minutes a day to it and mm -hmm. just sort of stayed on top of it. But. Exactly. Yeah. Some, some of the MOOCs that are out there, uh, I know that this podcast is about bite size professional development. Some of those are like <laughs> a five course meal. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, so, but you know, it's nice to kind of revisit it, pause it, go back, uh, really take a moment to really um, just kind of, you know, pause that video, go and do something else, come back to it and restart it. And right. Exactly. Cause that, that's, that's kind of how I was doing it. You know, I was, I was making, this three credit college uh, MOOC course bite sizable because I didn't have to go anywhere and sit for a three hour lecture. I was, t I was taking it in 15, 20 minute blocks and stuff. Absolutely. So uh, Lakeish and uh, Eric, any other ideas for, you know, that are sort of other ideas for bite sized professional development. I know those were the two of those. You, you each, I each wanted you to talk about those particular ones, but other other thoughts, uh, Lakeish, do you have any other ideas that uh, that you want to talk about? Yeah, sure. So, yeah, I, I try to do a variety of things for professional development, bite-sized, if you will, in addition to the conferences that I try to attend with regularity. Um, but TED Talks, TED Talks are a great way to continue to develop, be inspired, be motivated. Um, so I, I definitely try to to watch um, some talks at least one or two a week and you know if needed I can you know pause it and come back to it um, and sometimes I you know show them to my students as well with guided discussion so that's something that I do webinars webinars I love to do webinars as well um, because you know that allows me to not have to leave um, my location to travel somewhere to a conference and it's relatively affordable so I try to do uh, do webinars also. Yeah. Eric, you got yeah. Yeah. Eric, yes. thoughts, Eric? Absolutely. So I, I'm so glad Lakeish brought up TED Talks because um, one of my uh, recent discoveries was on uh, the uh, Pecha Kucha 20 by 20, oh, yeah. which wa which are basically presentations that are 20 slide or 20 images, uh, 20 seconds each. Yeah. So each one of those is about six minutes and 40 seconds in length. And they cover all sorts of amazing topics from art and, you know, architecture, history, um, all sorts of things. So they're, they're, they're really bite sized because they go by really, really mm -hmm. fast, but you get to learn quite a bit of information in that brief period of time. Yeah, and uh, Pachakacha is what we call it here in, in uh, it, but it, it has, it's, it's got, the emphasis is on different syllables depending on who's telling you, but uh, here in uh, the Waterville, Maine area, it's called <laughs> Pachakacha. Mm -hmm. And I actually did a presentation on it. If you go to my LinkedIn profile, if you dig in there, I, it's uh, the, my, my, uh, PK presentation was mm -hmm. on uh, uh, taking 10 minutes a day, just sort of take 10 minutes is what I called it and just mm -hmm. to slow down. But w I've seen some presentations on this one guy did the, the, the most amazing one was on doorknobs and, <laughs> but it was all on the door, the doorknobs that were sort of like from 400 years ago mm -hmm. <clears throat> before you had all the mechanical stuff, they were, he showed all the, there were like 20, it was like, it probably wasn't 20, but it was like 15, 10 to 15 different styles of doorknobs that were made out of wood and there were different ways to latch doors. So that, I'm glad you brought up PK because that is really, that is very cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and especially if you can watch them live, because a lot of cities and towns all over the country and all over the world, yeah. they have uh, dedicated nights uh, to watch uh, these presentations live, which yeah. can be an incredible mixed bag of information coming at you. Oh, yeah. um, and it's just a lot of fun. My other big kick is podcasts. I listen to, mm -hmm. uh, I, I've had a number of podcasts that I listen to, some for fun, and then, uh, but a number of them uh, are really for me to also grow professionally. There's some, uh, there's some just great podcasts out there for uh, on career topics and uh, was it Mark Dyson? He does, he does a great one. Uh, there's a bunch of them that I really, really like. Mm -hmm. 
Um, any final thoughts on from you guys on how do you find time to do these things? I mean, they're small. Some of these are small, but how do you how do you find time to squeeze these into your to your day? Well, from my perspective, you know, uh, it, it just it's it's kind of about intentionality. So really, you know. Mm -hmm. finding that time and utilizing it productively. So, you know, sometimes when I'm on a lunch break or something as simple as that, it's really easy to just play a TED talk in the background or, you know, just go through mm -hmm. an application. So, you know, it, it's, you know, it's really just, I mean, the time is kind of there already. It's just about using it productively um, and even as a sometimes I use it as a means of rest and relaxation which is kind of nice because mm -hmm. it's a change of pace from my regular daily activities mm -hmm. yeah I, I agree um, uh, well said Eric uh, it is a matter of just you know the time is there or, or making the time and it's it's just something that I find to be sort of a natural uh, inclination to want to grow professionally. And I feel that as though when you, you want to do that, you, you sort of in between, um, you know, working with clients or, or teaching or whatever it is that we sort of have to do when we have that, um, that inclination, that desire and that intentionality, then we'll just make time to, you know, put on a TED talk um, to learn, to be inspired or, um, you know, do all the variety of other things that we mentioned. We just kind of like, I look forward, I look forward to the different things that I do to develop. So for me, it's, it's fun. It's exciting. Um, so I naturally kind of want to make time for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's kind of funny too, because I'll sometimes, even with the news or the TV on, one of the things I have is my phone or tablet out and I'm constantly consulting Wikipedia or something along those lines or Googling <laughs> information to basically say, hey, I want to learn a little bit more about this. So, you know, even though I know multitasking is a myth and it's mostly about divided attention, <laughs> but hey, if there's something that sticks in my mind and I feel intrinsically motivated to learn it, I'm going to seize that moment to go ahead and learn. Yeah. I love Absolutely. I love I love how you've talked about uh intentionality. I really think that's sort of that's a that's a great that's a great word. Um and if you see on the bottom of this uh this slide uh, those are my three words that I I come up with three words for each year and in, actually intentional is one of my one of my three words. Um I do think you you need to be intentional. Mm -hmm. to say this is important you know mm -hmm. I've, and uh, and sometimes it's a matter of shutting off things so that you can be intentional um mm -hmm. well listen uh i want to thank both of you for uh for giving your thoughts here um if folks have not read uh, my blog on the bite-sized professional development you'll find it at the bitly uh, link peak careers 90 um, if you want to sign up for my newsletter and get the top 10 tips for working with an undecided person, uh, just go to my website. Um, I'm happy to, to connect with people on LinkedIn, Facebook, all these other places that you can connect with people. Uh, and uh, look forward to uh, connecting with some of you in the future. Um, for now, thank you, Lakish and Pat. And uh <laughs> Uh, Eric, I said Patrick. I was going with your last name first. Uh, thank totally you, fine. Eric and Lakish, uh, for uh, your thoughts on this. Perfect. Thank you so much, Jim. Thank you so much. All right.